Shalom, brothers and sisters. I want to start off by apologizing if there's any background noise. Uh, there's some construction going on outside my house. With that out of the way, I want to share my Thursday thought with you today, and it's a rather dark and unpleasant one. We have had yet another mass shooting. I don't really know what I can say to change anything because we as a society are simply unwilling to change. I would like to share some of my thoughts and I pray that not that they can help us through a difficult time because that's not what these thoughts are for. I pray that they can be pondered and expressed and move forward so that we can start looking for solutions and stop making excuses. In the New Testament, people who like to stockpile weapons love misquoting in the scriptures that talk about, you know, sell your plowshares and get a sword. I came here to divide brother against brother and to cause fights. But if you actually look at the labor of love that was the life and, and gospel of, and is the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you realize that the real message isn't the battleground. It's love your brother, love your sister, love your neighbor, love your enemies. And yes, they did go out and buy swords. But do you know how many? They bought two. That's not two per person. That's not two per group or congregation. Two for everyone that was there in Jesus' movement. And what did he do with the swords? Peter cut off the ear of someone who came to take Jesus. That's when we learned what the swords were for. They were for a teaching moment. When Jesus healed the man, repairing his ear, and said, you know, no, we, we, we don't do that. Full confession, I do keep a sword in my house. If I think there's an intruder, I do get it out. I do not own a gun. And the reason why, there's a, a, a knife company, Cold Steel, a Len Thompson. He has a great quote. He said, you can't shoot someone a little bit. And I do not want to spend the rest of my life knowing that I caused the death of another human being. I do not want to be responsible for sending anyone back to the God that made them. And I know there's many people that will say, well, what, would you kill to save your child? Not if I can help it. That's why I have a sword and not a gun. I can't accidentally shoot one of my kids in the middle of the night. And a couple of times when I didn't have to get my sword out, there was someone there. Just seeing that was enough. We need to do more to remove the violence from our culture. And the number one most important thing that we can do is to stop gun worshipping. Weapon worshipping, death worshipping, and we can become a society, we can become a people that embraces life. Let's face it, we sexualize guns. When you go to the movies, you want to see the tough action hero with the big sexy gun and the beautiful woman in his arms. But that's not the culture 
of Christianity, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What if we removed the gun and replaced it with a loaf of bread? What if instead of objectifying women, we worked with them to feed, water, and clothe, and shelter the world? We live in the wealthiest country, and yet we have the largest wealth gap. And we have so much disparity. Those that encourage us to buy guns encourage us to war with one another, to hunt one another, to kill one another. And my thought today is, let us choose instead to love one another. That's my Thursday thought, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.